Right, it is time for another book list of long books. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you the longest books on my TBR. Yes, the longest books that I want to read. Now, these aren't necessarily books that I own, but they are books that I want to read. I just went to Goodreads and, and sorted my want to read shelf, which is called a real want to read for reasons I, m I probably have explained before, but I have a different shelf for that. And I just sorted that shelf by page count, and these showed up as the longest books. So I may or may not own these, um, and but a lot of them are classics. A lot of them are widely available through libraries. Um, some of them are, I'm sure, public domain. Um, and uh, I just am going by the page count that reads the Goodreads has. So, and I think they're all known to be really long books, so we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, but yeah, they're all really long. And I actually, I have 21 here, which is more than I think I included on my longest books that I have read, which I will link up in the cards if you would like to check that out. That was a lot of fun to do as well. Um, but I had to go down because there were two books that I wanted to include for sure that I actually do own. And lo and behold, they had the exact same page count. So what are the chances? The first book or first of this last of the shortest, we're going for the shortest to the longest and the shortest on the longest list is Anna Karenina, which I always thought was Anna Karenina, but everyone says Anna Karenina. I imagine both are maybe not even right. Anyway, it is by Leo Tolstoy. Um, I read War and Peace and I loved it. So um, I am looking forward to reading this, although I actually haven't heard uh, that great things about it. Um, but anyway, I still want to read it. Um, it is the 960 pages. So that's a lot of pages. It's on two of my lists. Um, it's on my Shannon Reads of Those Books exploration, and it's also on, oh, it's actually on three lists. Um, it's also one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR, so I added it to my Goodreads TBR either the day I joined Goodreads or like within the next year. Um, and I think it was the day I joined Goodreads actually. And then it's also a book to film adaptation. And I actually do own the book to film adaptation, but I have it wrapped up. And this may or may not be it. Because this is the color for those books. And it could be it, it may not be it. But at 960 pages, Anna Karenina is the is tied for last place on the longest books on my TBR. And it's it's, it's friend, let's say it's friend, um, which is also 960 pages, which also might be this book, who knows, is... Let's see the reveal. Let's do the reveal. It's a Western. Any guesses? Any guesses? Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. I am really looking forward to reading this. I think it's only on one list. Yeah, it's just on my those books list, um, and uh, which I have released my reviews for all of my those books this that those books books which I have reviewed and my introductory video if you'd like to see it I will leave it in the cards um, and I go through why I started the exploration and all that good stuff um, but yeah so this is a western I've actually heard that it's actually quite readable um, and quite enjoyable I haven't heard anyone say that they didn't enjoy it um, so I am just I'm really looking forward to it but I don't know where it is I don't know if that's it. I have another one that's the exact same size and I'm not sure exactly where that is. So anyway, Lonesome Dove is also one that I want to read. The next one I want to read is 972 pages. It is the first in a trilogy. Let's do these like little quizzes, see if you can figure them out. It is the first in a trilogy and I believe it is, is it a trilogy? It's the first in a series and I believe it is religious themed, historical, maybe about building something. Um, and that is The Pillars of Earth by Ken Follett. I do not know much about this. I think, I think, yeah, it's part of a series. I remember it when I worked at bookstores. I remember selling lots of copies. Um, and I remember it being a big book, 976 pages. That's a lot of books. That's a lot in a book. That's, it's a lot to commit to a series that starts with a book. That's 976 pages. So. <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that one, but technically I want to read it. It is on the those books list at 988 pages. I actually have a trilogy and there are a couple of trilogies on here and I listed them as trilogies because to complete the challenge that I'm working on 
the goal is to read the trilogy. So it's unusual, but there are a few trilogies on here. This one I do not know much about. Um, I think it's Amer Americana and also pretty dude-ish. <laughs> There's not much of a hint. So it is the Studs Lonigan trilogy by James T. Farrell, which includes Young Lonigan, The Young Manhood of Studs Lonigan, and Judgment Day. This is on my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration list. I don't know anything about it. I think I saw recently someone, I did see someone maybe on Twitter or Instagram mention that they were reading one of the books in the series. And that is the first I've seen anyone talk about it. So that was, that was just one of those moments that uh, uh, was just sort of kismet, you know, because <laughs> I had like, haven't heard anyone here talk about it. So let me know. Have you read it? Did you enjoy it? Is my rough estimation of what it's about anywhere near what it is about. Next up, we are going into the over a thousand page category at 1006 pages. This is historical fiction with some fantasy thrown in. And it was made into a TV series, which I have seen. And that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Um, this actually is, I think, quite beloved um, and uh, by many people. And um, I have it, I think. I did have it in hardcover at some point. I switched to the paperback because it is so many pages. Um, and I watched the series this year, the miniseries this year. And I actually wasn't a huge fan. I didn't find either of the title characters that likable, but there were lots of side characters and supplementary characters that I really enjoyed and wanted to know more of. So that kind of intrigues me to read it. With book to TV adaptations, I usually wa like watching the TV series first and then read the book, so I did do that intentionally. This is on two of my lists. It's on my sci-fi fantasy and weird list, as well as my book to film book to TV adaptation list. So we'll see if that one happens. The next up is also the first in a trilogy. Um, it is 1,015 pages. It is romance, fantasy, and potentially, I think it might even go into the line of erotica or is just, or maybe just really racy. I am not sure. It is the most, is on the most lists out of any of the titles, it's on four lists. It's on the sci-fi, fantasy, and weird list. I own this on Kindle, so it's on my Kindle owned unseen list, owned unread list. It is on my book club backlist list, and it's also one of the books that I added to Goodreads the first year that I joined. So it's part of my oldest on Goodreads list, and that is Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. Um, I've only heard good things about this, but when I got it, it was it's one of the books picked, it was one of the Vaginal Fantasy uh, book club picks from before I was participating in the book club. And I remember Felicia Day talking about it. And she loved it so much that I was like, okay, I have to read this. And I bought it on Kindle, not knowing it was 1,015 pages. And now years have gone by and I have not started it. And also because it is, it's the first in a trilogy, but I think the series also continues past the trilogy with like more books. So I'm just like, that's a huge commitment. And I just haven't been able to meet it, but I really do want to read it. So I'm curious about it very much and I, I hope to get it at some point or get to it at some point. Next up is at 1017 pages. This is a classic. Um, I think it, I, I, I don't know too much about it. I know Amy from Zoe Beck read it recently um, this year at some point and it's on my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration and it's from an author that I've only read one work from and I do want to try something else. I don't know if I'm going to start with this, but that is Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Um, and I think this has to do with poverty, I think is one of the themes. I think that is a theme in a lot of his works, if I know correctly. Um, so I am... I want to read it, but I think I might start with something a little shorter. Recommendations are welcome. The only thing I've read is A Christmas Carol, and I didn't really enjoy that. So, um, uh, anything else? <laughs> anything else? Next up, this one I don't know anything about, but there's a boat on the cover. It is 1,024 pages. I think it's a location. I think the name of it is a location, and I think it's Americana, and it is... Chesapeake by James A. Michener. If this is a nautical title, I would really want to know because I do like nautical works um, and I would like to read more. Actually, I think I can say clearly, I think I like nautical works, but I'm not sure. There is something about being at sea that I find fascinating, um, just the power of the sea or the ocean or the water 
but this could be, I, mean, I think Chesapeake Bay is also a location. Is it, is it, is it, there's a romance series, I think, or women's fiction series with that title. I'm not sure. Anyway, so this is on the list. This is on the list. Next up, okay, so this one is 1,024 pages, which is the same as Chesapeake. It is of, it is, when I was doing some research, it was noted sort of as potentially the first modern novel. Some people call it the best novel of all time. It is Spanish, and it is Don. I always think it's Quixote, but other people, I've heard some people pronounce it differently, so I always thought it was Don Quixote, but that pronunciation may be off. It's by Miguel de Cervantes, and um, I heard, who read this recently? Was it Karen from Rather Be Reading, um, and I think, again, this one might be, I don't know, this one is quite, I think it's from like 1605 to 1615, it was published in two volumes, so that's going to be a challenge. This also might be one that I have to, might be, need to be particular on the edition, even though I imagine it's public domain and I probably have a copy on my Kindle somewhere, it might be worth getting like an Oxford edition or a Penguin edition or something like that, but I'm not sure. I'll probably just try whatever I have first and then see there. I actually don't know what this is really about at all, so, but I do want to read it. This is one that I feel like it just really is a classic and it is going to be a challenge and I want to take on that challenge. So I think that when there's a high likelihood that I will read it, it's translated from the Spanish and it is on my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration list. Next up at 1037 pages, this is an Civil War classic. It is, this is a real trivia moment. It is Sarah from the Bookish Knitters favorite book, <laughs> I think, either favorite or in the running for her most favorite book. So those who watch her channel may know what, where I'm going with this one. It was made into a wide, widely popular classic movie, and that is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. Um, this is on the Shannon Reads Those Books exploration, and I actually have this on Kindle. And I was going to consider it owned and read on Kindle, but I actually got it when it was free. So when I get something for free, I don't necessarily consider it owned on red. It's just that I have it because I didn't buy it, but I do want to read it. It's a bit, does it, it does, it's sort of neither here nor there for this particular title because I do want to read it. I have seen the movie and I didn't love the movie, but I saw it under not the great, cir greatest circumstances. I was doing a big challenge to watch 101 films in 1001 days and they were particular films that were on film lists and popular films and cult films and you know, like lots of lists that I do. It's sort of like a combination of those things. And it was the last movie on the list and I had it on VHS. <laughs> Yes. And I timed it to watch it before the, t the clock ran out on the 1001th day. 1001st day? 1001th day? before the clock ran out. So that, so, and I didn't love it. It's not my favorite time period. I feel like I missed some of the there's some of the uh the moments the the emotional moments I was missing some context or something like I wasn't picking up on something so I think actually reading the book would be a really good idea because it would give that context the movie is gorgeous like it's absolutely gorgeous I'm not saying that I'm just saying like I just I didn't quite get what it was projecting. I wasn't receiving what it was saying. So yeah, Gone with the Wind, it's on the list. And I do have it on Kindle. It was actually, it came up on, on um, the uh, free, because I tend to browse free Kindle books, because <laughs> I do that. Okay, next up, when, this one's at 1,049 pages. This one I need to do some more research on. This one is actually on no lists. Um, I just want to read it, but it's one where I don't know what edition. It's by Anonymous, but there are several like translated works or compiled works, but where do you go with this kind of thing? And I do not know where to go or where to start or where to look or this one just will require some research on where to uh, start with this, and it is um, the Arabian Nights. So there's often 
versions that are Tales from 1001 Nights. I don't know if there's, and like, I think the ones that have like 1001 stories are like 10 editions long. So that's obviously going to be more than 1,049 pages probably. So I'm not sure where to start. So if you have read this or titles about this or studied this or anything, I will do my own research. I'm not asking people to do my research. But if you have any idea where a good place to start for this is, I would love to hear it because I just, I have read the Wikipedia page and I'm just kind of like, I don't know where to go. Like, I don't know and if there is one definitive collection or is there something more recent that's been put together? Because um, I think there are sort of two popular versions and there is some contesting between like whose work is whose, but it's also translated and it's, you know, you know, I like to go to the source and this probably isn't it. So it's a bit of a tricky one. So that one's going to require some more research. But the edition that I put as I want to read this on Goodreads happens to be 1049 pages. So that is a research mode one. The next one is translated from the Norwegian. This is another one that is actually a trilogy. So it's three books, but it's often put together as one title. And that is, do you know what it is? It's 1073 pages and it is Kristen Lavin's Daughter by Sigrid Uns Unsed. It might be Unsed. I don't know if you don't pronounce the D. Hmm, not sure. We'll have to learn about that a bit more. Um, so this is on my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration list. I really, really want to read it. Um, and it's a historical fiction, um, female-centered, uh, woman-centered, and I think it is sort of like, I can't remember the title of the three works, but I think it is sort of made in Mother Crone-ish, not in a mystical sense, but just in terms of age sense. Like, may, I think it might actually be made in mother, wife, maiden, wife, mother, or something like that. So I'm not totally sure. This one actually did finally, um, initially it wasn't available on ebook from the library, but now it is. So I'm like, yay. Um, although it would be nice to have a physical edition, but I like at over a thousand pages, that might be a li little unmanageable, which I'll get to in a second about something else. But I really want to read this. This is also a title I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, but when I was doing my, putting my, those books list together, I was like, this sounds really fascinating. And it was mentioned in, Oh, either the the diviners or it might have been the lives of girls and women. I think it was the lives of girls and women, and um, which they're both Canadian novels. And uh, yeah, so I want to read that. Next up at one thousand and eighty eight pages. This is on my Shannon read those books exploration. This is one where I think it sort of creates. There's the whole thing behind the book of like there's like its own lexicon and its own myth, not mythology, but like structure or something. I don't know. This isn't going to need a little bit more research, but there definitely feels like there's, there's more to it. There, there's, it's quite an investment. This is definitely a highly DNF'd book. <laughs> um, and uh, I am going to give it a shot at some point. And that is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. So I, I think this has, because even this says three ways to visualize the complex masterpiece from flowchart to geolocation photo tour with a character diagram. So that's the, sort of the, the, someone put this, who put this put together. Oh, it's from Brain Pickings. Um, anyway, so it's apparently very complex and very complicated. So that will be quite an endeavor, but I don't actually know what it's about about. You know, I know that there's all this stuff around it, but I don't know what it's about, so... I don't know. Uh, next up at 1,110 pages, and this one is translated from the French. This one I was surprised actually isn't on any of my lists other than that it's a book to film adaptation, either in the works or at this point it might have happened. It is a standalone book that is the third in a four book series, and it is Belle de Seigneur by Albert Cohen. I know virtually nothing about this other than the fact that I heard it was being adapted and I marked it as want to read, and here we are. So I don't even know if this is available at the library. I'm, I'm sure it probably is, at least physically, maybe not digitally. But yeah, I should check in on the adaptation and see like if it's how how far along it is, um, because 1,110 pages, oh my gosh. Okay, at 1,152 pages, the first in a trilogy, again, I am I'm scared at when the first book in a trilogy is over a thousand pages. Um, and this one, I actually remember, this is one that I've seen on the shelves of uh, books, 
uh, on the bookshelves of lots of men that I know. I don't know if that's going to give any clue. Um, and that would be Shogun by James Clavell. Um, and this is the first in, I think, yeah, the Asian saga. I think it's historical fiction from that. It feels very historical fiction. Um, this is one I want to research a little bit more. Um, I don't know too much about it. And um, I just like to have a little bit more context on on you know, how the book came to be. I can't remember. It's, I didn't put the year, but I think this is from the 80s or before, maybe? Um, and I, as I said, it's the first in a series. So 1,000 pages for the first in a series. Uh, uh. Next up, one that I think this one is a bit more philosophically oriented, uh, 1,068 pages by a female author. I don't have too much more context for that. Um, but that is Atlas Shrugged by Anne. Is, is that how you say her first name? Anne Rand? On Rand? I'm not sure. So, but I think this one is sort of philosophical, societal commentary, potentially. I might own this one. I might have it wrapped up somewhere, but I'm not sure. I'm sure. It's, a, it's very well-known and popular, I'm sure it will not be hard to get a hold of it. That's actually one of the nice things about a fair amount of these titles is they're very widely available. Although this next one I might want to get in a physical edition because there are illustrated copies of it. Um, it is 1,173 pages for the trilogy altogether, and this is actually a fantasy trilogy, and I totally thought it was a horror book just because of the title, but I didn't know anything about it before. It was. It's on the Shan reads those books list, but it's also on my sci-fi fantasy and weird list. I think I don't know too much more about it. And it is the Gormenghost trilogy that is three books. It is Titus Grown, Gormenghost, and Boy in Darkness. Um, but and the library actually does have e-copies. They didn't used to, but now they do. And um, but I I don't know. I just especially with this, I'm like, and it's fantasy. I think it might be dark fantasy. Um, and so I just feel like it might be worth getting a physical edition. Um, and it's by Mervyn Peak. I forgot to say it, by Mervyn Peak. So let me know, have you read this? I don't know pe many people. I know a couple of people who read it when they were younger, but I haven't heard of anyone reading it recently. Um, and um, so sometimes I don't always have the best results on reading other people's childhood favorites when I read them now. It's, that's a bit of a weird loop, but it is also true. Um, but I do want to give this one a shot. I might, maybe what I should do is read the first book from the library and see how I get on with that. And if I like it, then maybe I can um, look for an illustrated edition and maybe also look for what the illustrations look like, because if I'm not a huge fan of the illustrations, then it's not likely that it makes sense to get it. I. I tend to like illustrations no matter what they look like. So I think that's probably the direction I'll go. But anyway, so that is the one for that. We're getting close, folks. I think we have four left. And the next one is 1,232 pages. This is the only one I have a physical copy that is not wrapped up because I got it recently. It is a French work. It is historical. There is a musical based on it with Jean Valjean and Javert and Cosette and Fantine and what else would it be than Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Um, and this one actually, I think there there must have been a recent, this is a BBC, a major BBC drama, which it must be recent-ish. I don't rec I recognize, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. Do they have it on here? Dominic West, Lily Collins. And then more pictures throughout. So this is an epic, and it's in five books. And I have a, another project that I'm going to do in association with this. In association, in association with, I um another project is, is like with this one. I am hoping to start this this year. I was hoping to finish it this year. As the year is moving along, I feel like that's a bit unlikely. But I am um yeah, I have broken it down to five, five uh parts. It's in five parts and, I, and they're each like 250 pages. Well, that text is actually pretty small, but the chapters are very short. So for me with longer works, that always is something that is helpful. So 
Yeah, Les Miserables. I know I have seen the musical multiple times and I know the musical pretty much off by heart. Um, and so I have, I feel like I have a strong-ish sense of the story, um, but I do like to read the original text, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, next up, 1,276 pages. This is another French work um, and I am a little uh, hesitant about this one because I believe the theme is revenge. I have read something else by this author. I have read The Three Musketeers, but this title is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Um, and so I am really leery of this one, like really leery of this one, just for all of those reasons. The Three Musketeers was a really, really challenging read for me. Um, it was my focused read. I needed to read it within a month and I read it like every day, like clockwork. And I just was working so hard to finish that book and I didn't really enjoy it, but I think it was more contextual. Um, and it was when I wasn't reading a lot of more challenging works. Like I, I was like still not far off from reading mostly YA. So I think that had something to do with it. So, but yeah, so I, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this one, um, but it is on the list and it is one of the longest on the list. Um, and the second longest on the list is another trilogy. Uh, I believe it's an, it's it's gotta be an Americana trilogy with the title. Um, it is 1,288 pages for all three books. It's on my Shannon Reads Those Books list and it is the USA trilogy by John Dos Passos. No, this was the one. This was the one. It wasn't the Studs Lonergan, um, which I'm actually not sure if I'm saying that like long, long again, long again. I'm not sure. Anyway, the USA trilogy. Someone is reading one of these books right now. So, someone out there. Someone out there. I saw it on Instagram or Twitter and I'm like, wow, haven't heard anyone talk about this ever. And then I saw someone. So someone's reading this. So thank you for reading it, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say, but it was just interesting to see. Anyway, so as I said, I don't know anything about this. Um, it is on my Shannon Reads Those Books exploration, and the trilogy is the entry for that exploration. So yeah, um, but I don't know anything about it. And I'm not sure, I think, I can't remember if this one's unscribed or not. I haven't actually gone through and checked all of these um, recently for that. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've read it. Let me know if, you're, uh, if you'd recommend it. The three books are The 49th Parallel, 1919, and The Big Money. I have no idea what the themes are other than I imagine it's Americana, maybe American history uh, or historical fiction but I don't quote me on that because I really don't know. We are now on to the last title and this is clocking in at 1,474 pages. And I think this is often people's either longest read book or is on like any list of like the longest books. And it might actually have been when it came out the longest book ever. Don't totally quote me on that, but I remember selling them and it being like that book is huge. Huge. And it's the first in the series again. And it is A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. Yeah, this is on the Shannon Reads Those Books exploration, 1,474 pages. I just, I can't even quite imagine. I would have to read this one digitally. Um, I can't even imagine how many hours it would be in an audiobook. Like, it's got to be... I don't even know, 90? I don't know. I don't read a lot of audiobooks. I don't read fiction via audiobook either. But... Yeah, and I actually do not know too much about this one. This doesn't say anything. There's a quote on it, but it's so I can't surrender to this. Oh, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't, you know, do you want a spoiler for a 1,474 page book? I don't. It might be historical, might not, not sure, but it is the longest on the list, and that is the longest books on my TBR. It's quite extraordinary. Now, I put all of the numbers together, and if I read all of these books, the pages for all of these books, it is 23,090 pages. So, 23,090. So, that's a lot of pages. And that's what I thought. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of pages. And then I realized this year to date, I have actually already read 48,000. 271 pages as of the end of September. Now, a lot of those are not as hard as things like this is going to be, but it put into context that it is probably a lot more achievable to read these than 
I thought I would have to put aside like half of my reading. Not super sure I'm going to do that. But it did encourage me to make me feel like this is possible and it can be possible and not like have to be like the next 10 years or something. Although maybe it will be. I'm not sure. I'm not setting out that I am going to read all of these books within a certain period of time. I'm not doing that. But it makes me feel like it is possible to do that should I wish to do so. So maybe I will. Maybe that will be a project for another day or another year or two years or what. I do try and read at one to two really long books a year. Uh, this year I did finish Dune and I am going to start Les Miserables, maybe finish it, who knows. Um, but because I like the challenge and I enjoy reading classic works, I enjoy, especially if it's like the source material for other works or was influential um, or was made into movies or TV series, those are always drivers for me. And almost all of these are on at least one list. I should really read Kushiel's Dart because it's on four, four lists. For this. So let me know some what are some of the longest books that you want to read. As I mentioned, if you use Goodreads, you can just go to your want to read shelf, put page count in the settings and hit sort and you will know. You will know right away. Um, so yeah, so thinking on, thank you for going on this journey with me. I hope it wasn't too too like I hope it was fun to have those be sort of like surprise like prompt to sort of guess it. That I didn't even plan that. So I hope it was a fun way to see what the titles were. <laughs> Maybe I'll try that in the future. Maybe not. Who knows? And hopefully I will read some of these books. 21 titles. It's a lot. It is a lot. We'll see how things go. I like reading long books. Do you like reading long books? Let me know your thoughts below. Take care and happy reading.